and I do apologize. It's Kale. Well, yeah. it's Kale. 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 Oh my God. Because we, I think Not we called you Kale, Kale for three years. Yeah. I apologize yeah. for that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions. And we're with Mahesh. Kare. 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 Uh, the that, incomparable yeah. Mahesh Kare. Who we just, <laughs> we just were blessed to see live. Yes, we were. A few were. minutes ago. You are our first, second technically, our, our first uh, Indian kind of concert was with the Ustad Juzike Hussain, uh, but he was with a, a guy playing like a cello and then a Yeah, guitar. there were no vocalists. You are our first ever Indian classical concert. Oh, yeah. Lovely. And it was, um, I don't know if there's, it, 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 was, it felt kind of like a three hour reaction because <laughs> yeah, I felt right? how I do after reactions almost speechless <laughs> because uh you don't need me to tell you this you're really talented um but I, he mahesh is currently doing a, a united states tour your first correct yes i mean I've performed in many places but right i haven't been on an extended uh time on the road so to say yeah i've always wanted to do that like why not Yes. yes. And, um, and so I will put the link in the description below so you can go buy tickets because you absolutely need to buy tickets uh, to go see uh, this wonderful, wonderful concert. Um, what is, well, first, before, while we're start on that subject, what are the differences between an Indian audience in India and a United, like a, an audience in the United States? What would be the big differences, if any? Well, not many differences. Mm -hmm. Some differences because there is anticipation of familiarity for the Indian audiences, mm -hmm. and then there is anticipation of mysticism for the mm -hmm. Western audience because mm -hmm. they don't know what to expect. Right. So they are ready to go somewhere they don't know, but they know they are probably going to feel good. While these are visitors that have been to the city uh, a few times before, that they know we want to go there and there and there. So. Hmm. When the anticipation is relinquished, they feel good versus in the West, when people are coming for the first time, they feel like they are uh, more kind of trying to see where they are going to be headed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is each concert different in many ways or in small ways or a little bit of both? Many ways. Many ways. You know, the same river doesn't flow twice. So yeah. Uh, we don't breathe the same air twice. So Indian classical music is very spontaneous. It's like you cannot decide what you will crave to eat a month after. Mm. So it's just in the moment. Mm. So I like to surrender myself to the moment. Yeah. And whatever inspires me, I go and start singing. Yeah. So you have a insane range. Oh my goodness! Um, we, we didn't really <laughs> understand it till we got we got to hear it tonight. But and, at least we think we heard the full okay. range. So. And I'm not a musician. Rick is a musician. Um, so I, I, what is your what would your range actually be if you know in terms of like? And we're we, we will a, think about that in terms of Western. Uh, you 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 probably you can sing know? bass and tenor. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to sound philosophical, but I think it is, uh, my range is enough to experience, but not enough to express. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but note for note, because our only understanding would be in Western understandings of that, the notes I heard you singing would be within the range of the notes a bass would hit, and they would also be in the range that a tenor so, would hit. Yeah, I mean, I was trained to do a full three octaves. There you go. So that's what I can do. Yeah. Uh, but it's something if it's to on hold, the... not to display. So right. I don't always... It's nice sometimes I'm like, oh, let's go low today. That's what I felt like today. Right. Partially because this is the third concert of the weekend, and my voice has taken a beating. I'm sure. And it naturally lends itself to the lower registers then. Yeah. Um, and obviously we know Indian 
musicians in general, all of them, start very young in terms of when they start training. Did you start like as a as a wee wee child as well? You know, I and don't know. Yes, I mean, I've been told I sang my first song when I was three years old, but it's mostly like. You know, it's beautiful with music and it's very close. I know you're a dad. You know, the baby learns the language just as sounds. And after they actually learn the words, they start deciphering what those sounds actually mean. Mm -hmm. Until then, the sounds are just associations. Mm -hmm. So I have started to learn music since it was just a... an association to me yeah mm. and then once you start learning the language and the grammar that association starts making a little more sense yeah yeah that's basically how mm-hmm. it was yes i started young my mother was a a, a singer <clears throat> she was a homemaker but she was very passionate about singing uh, when me and my elder brother were both teenagers is when she actually decided to get into a master's program and get her degree in music mm. so mm. that's how passionate she was so mm. i was very fortunate to be gro- uh, growing up around music all the time yeah so now i know a lot of indians are fam- are way more familiar with indian classical music mm. than we are or most people are in the west i have a question about that in a second but the main question i have is i was reading that when you were growing up and you were a disciple if if i mispronounced the name please forgive me of of, of pandit jitendra abhishekhi mm-hmm. and that i've heard it described as a gurukul like setting yeah what what exactly is that we wouldn't even know what that means in terms of the setting you grew well, up in and studied it means you just go hang out you don't have a schedule and then you observe and then you imbibe and you execute that is basically what it is it's like an internship when there is no clock in or clock out time i got you so it's an absorbing all of the time see until then what what happens usually um like many other things you do you look at music as a thing that you want to conquer and achieve and hence you put a schedule around it you say i'm going to do it two twi- twice right. a week i'm going to do thrice a week and every day and twice a day but in a gurukul you are suspended in a way that music surrounds you when you're sleeping mm-hmm. uh it it is with you the whole whole time whether you are consciously doing it or not so you do it enough amount of time when you are awake that when you go to sleep the subconscious mind starts doing it on mm. its own and hence you get into a 24 hour cycle so in a way in the gurukul you actually learn music as a way of life not mm. as a subject to conquer right i think who study said something it was he did say something about the instrument itself and so then, yeah. he's not the master even because we we our vernacular would be to say someone's a master of an instrument and a master and and his response to that was nah. i don't master it i'm i'm allowed to partner with the instrument i'm not, i do not master the instrument yeah but yeah. he's definitely a master <laughs> we know very master <laughs> who you have had the you I, we know that you've had you've d- yeah. done work with him yeah yes yeah I'm, i'm very lucky to have yeah yeah worked with him a few times um you the the concert that we just saw um you were speaking mostly in marathi correct i'm sorry no no it's fine no, no it's fine be, please it, it, it's part of my question uh and so obviously any time you talked I didn't really understand what you were saying uh and people were laughing people were clapping at times but then when the music started I f- I could understand what you were saying uh, well, f- mm-hmm. for the most part right do you think music is like the universal language oh absolutely you know as long as all human beings irrespective of their uh, geography their privilege their background uh laugh when they feel uh the same way cry when they feel sorrow mm-hmm. jump when they feel elated i think the bottom line is always going to be the same for all of us mm. yeah um it is one language that we understand even if we did not know it mm. that is what i feel about music because you could see that there were different age groups and they are from different places in india also here but there was kind of a, a unison in response of how nobody laughed and while everyone else was crying for example, right everyone was elated at the same time yeah and that's the bottom line i think music is a wonderful equalizer and brings to me all living beings on the same platform mm-hmm. 
one of the things I loved about the concert um, was how much you had us, the audience, involved, where we were singing with you, and we had to respond, and uh, not just because that's an entertaining thing, but because it evidences how much it means to you Absolutely. to have people involved. And you said a beautiful thing during the concert. Mm -hmm. You, you encouraged people to sing because they had messed it up. And you said so. You said, yeah, no, that wasn't good. <laughs> but then you said, you can get perfect joy with an imperfect melody. Yeah. And uh, for us and everyone in the West who doesn't fully understand the depth of what it means to you for us to understand Indian music, what's, what's some of the most important things you'd want us to know about Indian classical music for people who don't know anything about it, what are some of the most important things for you, for us to take away I from it? I think it's the purest impression of the breath in the sound uh, arena. Hmm. Uh, it's more introspective. I mean, I might be singing loudly, doing a bunch of things, but it brings me a, an acute sense of calm inside. I mean, I mean, I... I am there with you, I'm making all of you sing and indulging with all of you, but in a different plane I'm flying and I think it's empowering and humbling both at the same time. And you know, by and large in the, the way that the world is turning and changing, so many of us are trying to look for happiness all around us and indulging so much that we forget that all the happiness that needs to be is all inside us. And I think music is such a simple and a beautiful path to mm. go to that inward journey. <laughs> and if it gives me that much joy, and if me singing and having joy gives people around joy, it's what a wonderful world, as they say. Music. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's a, a good segue into a question I had, and I've asked another musician this. How do you see music? When you're reading it, or when you're when you when you hear it for the first time, how do you see it in your head? Well, it's different. Sometimes it's just all white and pure, and there's nothing. You feel like you're drenched in the in the rain. It's like a breeze that washes off of you. Or sometimes there's an absolute sense of calm to a place where it is so quiet that the sound of silence is what is most enamoring. Mm -hmm. Does that also translate into what I understand about Indian classical music is that the moments in between the notes are mm -hmm. more important often than the notes themselves, mm -hmm. including the silences, yeah. yes? Yeah. It's not only what, but how you uh, sing certain... I mean, it's the shape of the notes, not just the position of the notes. Ah. So I love to blend it's like a, yeah. building a sculpture in the air using the notes that's a great well. analogy uh it's actually another good segue into my next question you are very expressive with your hands while you sing more than others in terms of and I'm, maybe this is why um you are you are you directing the music where to, like how to come out like when you're pointing it goes like that when you're doing I forget what you it's know, called, but the, 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 that thing, you're spinning your hands, yeah. you're, how, what, is that just part of your training? Well, one, I don't know that I'm <laughs> doing all of that, thank you very much. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, so, again, at the risk of sounding philosophical. Please do. You know, the mind is what is playing your body as an instrument, mm. where the the lead is being taken by your voice and then it all comes together with your body so it's almost like my hands my gestures are the accompanying instruments to my voice mm -hmm. and my mind or my soul is playing this whole instrument together so just like you have the drums and the mm -hmm. the, the melody accompanists I think somehow my hands and my face and pro are trying to accompany the music that flows through my voice. That's probably would, what would it be comparable, say, to an electric guitarist makes facial expressions while they play? So it's just the physical accompaniment happening through you know, the expression. There's a beautiful scene in the movie Avatar where he goes and mm, yes. attaches its 
So it's like that. Once your mind attaches to your body, yeah, then it just flows. And when it flows, you don't know which way the breeze is going to sway you, mm-hmm. but you let it because it's the most beautiful thing to experience. So yeah, I, know. I I go unhindered. Yeah, uh, if you talked to me off stage, I'm a little uh, reserved. I but on stage, I it, I just feel possessed and I allow. Okay. Now, I, I personal question, because I saw this on your, your website about who you've worked with. You worked with Pedro Eustache. Yeah. He's a, I know Pedro. Yeah, uh, so when did, you get the, when did you get to work? Yeah, well, sweet man. I was in uh, LA. There, there was something called Grand Performances where they block out the, the downtown. Uh-huh. And they have different bands. So we, ha- we, we were part of this, if I remember it co- correctly, Raga Jazz or something. Hmm. Paul was uh, on it, there was a cellist, there was a piano player, there was a drummer, and then there was Pedro. Yeah. And I bonded with Pedro because he has learnt with Hariji for a little while. Uh-huh. And I love how he surrenders to the instrument. Absolutely it does. That's something that, that we have in common. And he's a very sweet, yes, kind, absolutely. open, absolutely. yeah, well, that's wonderful. Um, we've interviewed quite a few, not maybe not quite a few, but um, a couple uh, amazing uh playback singers or classical Indian singers and um, like Chakraborty mm-hmm. um, or other people like that. And people get mad at us when we don't ask them to sing on <laughs> camera. I'm not asking you to sing right now. Um, I'll get mad if you did. Yes. Yeah. After three hours of no, 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 no. You've done enough singing. But apparently it's like <laughs> very normal <laughs> to ask uh, Indian classical singers to perform for you right off the bat. But also I saw it in your concert. Like you'll be just talking and then you'll go straight into music. Or like it, it felt like you just got on, you just came into the venue and you started singing. Is your voice just always ready to go? You know, because of all the that, training? It goes back to the training where yeah. I said that music is a way of life. Mm. You know, the musical concert starts from the time you leave your home or whatever place mm. to go for the venue. The breath that you breathe in with the consciousness of I'm going to the concert is actually where the concert begins. Mm. Mm. And that's where your subconscious brain starts planning things. I don't know them, but I would like to believe that's how it happens. So, and it's like a play field, right? You're playing ball. Mm -hmm. You don't need to warm up to play catch. You just throw the ball, you catch, and then you throw back and you catch. That's what music is. Well, from what I know of like Western singers, they need like tea or they need like lemon water. We have particular regimens that they go. I'm sure you have certain Wimps. things you do as a good steward of your instrument to take care of yourself. Yeah. You're just bad singers. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love this uh, music a lot. There's um, Andrea Bocelli. I love, yeah. love, love his voice. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Josh Groban. They're mm-hmm. all wonderful. Celine Dion. They're beautiful mm-hmm. singers. Um, you know, th- this is only a... a, 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 a passage right mm-hmm. the music comes from a, a, a deeper place within mm-hmm. and then what you're going to drink or eat is not going to reach there mm-hmm. you're just going to make sure that you condition your body so that whatever has to flow through flows through unhindered mm-hmm. and of course we have some ayurvedic i'm actually having an ayurvedic tablet right now mm-hmm. which has some turmeric some uh, cinnamon and uh, concoction of certain different herbs um i like to have it because i think it makes me salivate and keeps on making me hydrated but i don't think i have a regime Mm. Uh, i i might be an engineer and you would like to believe that i have an algorithmic life but i'm very spontaneous Uh, my body knows what i want before i actually know Mm -hmm. or Somehow I get on the stage and you saw us musicians working. We didn't sing. I think, in fact, that's the first time we sang that rock together. But you saw, you saw how spontaneously we were getting it. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, sometimes we think uh, control is very empowering. I think surrender is more empowering than mm-hmm. that. And I love to surrender to music. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It take me wherever it can. Yeah, which is the the nature I understand of of Indian classical music itself is the improvisational aspect yeah. of it. And yeah. the the other thing that's uh, 
very obvious and is beautiful as part of the experience is the fact that the only word I can figure out, and I'm, this is probably the word, is there's an auspiciousness to the way you are on the platform, on the stage where you are shoeless or sockless and you are cross-legged. Mm -hmm. And I, we found that to be pretty much the case across the board with all cl classical musicians, that mm -hmm. they tend to not, where in the West there's a lot of standing and mm -hmm. I, I've been directed before to not be si sitting because you can slouch, but I know you've been trained. And is that, does that coming from a place of respect for the music, respect for God, respect for your instrument? Yes. Yeah? You know, uh, if you went to a temple, uh, I know you guys went to India a few years ago. If mm. you went to a temple, when you meet the gods, when you pray them, you're not supposed to leave without sitting mm. and just respecting and observing uh, your respect to them. I think um, the sitting comes from that mm. background. When you sit with music, you're actually praying for the higher divine power to intervene and flow through you and for that you sit, you surrender, you allow everything that has to and that only happens in worship mm -hmm. and in worship there is surrender. So that cross-legged position is I uh, volunteer myself mm. for uh, the music to flow through. Mm. That is the way I look at it. Sure. And sockless because we don't wear shoes in the temple. So to me, the moment the, the drones, Tanpura starts playing, my accompanists are in their places, the stage transforms into a temple. Mm. And we observe the same kind of decorum we would in the temple. Yeah. Mm. Um, we've seen you also as a playback singer. Uh, in I apologize, I do not know no, the Marathi. No, I, I, I do not. I do not know the Marathi name. Uh, the one with here. I'll teach you. Katyar. Katyar. Karzat. Karzat. Karozat. Karozat. Not R. Karo. Karo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not remember that. I apologize. Okay. Goosey. 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 All right. I like that word. He, yeah, okay. <laughs> He'll take Goosey out of that. No, That's no, what no. He's going to take away from Goosey that. Goosey like Bruce Lee. Goosey. 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 Yeah, there you go. All right. Goosey. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the only Marathi word I know, I think. Gusli. We need to know friend, though, because we know friend in Hindi and Bengali and, and Tamil. But what What's would be... What's in Marathi? Mitra. 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 Yes. Mitra. Am I saying that? Mitra. Yes. Mitra. Okay. Mitra. Um, but anyways, obviously, on that movie. Uh, I'm not going to say it again. Um, what, is there any difference in, in playback singing versus, obviously... Yes, there is. I'll tell you the difference. You know, live music is kind of playing a sports game mm. where you start scoring from zero every single time you actually sing. And uh, singing in the studio is like drawing a painting. You can redraw, you can change, and only when you think it is ready, you actually put it for display. Mm -hmm. That is what recorded music is. Yeah. So um, it's a very different kind of a ball game recording versus mm. performing live. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I just out of, want to make sure we're respectful on, on time, how we're doing. If you have any other yeah. questions, I just have a final statement that I want to I want to just thank you for about the concert before we go. Do we want to you want to speed round? Do you want to have um, any other? Yeah, we'll do a, a rapid fire real quick here. OK, with a slow yeah. musician. <laughs> <laughs> Slow. Rapid fire with a slow musician. You were doing the ah thing, yeah. and it was. <laughs> you should have seen really fast at the intermission. We were outside drinking some chai and hanging out. He was. I need you to he, teach Indrani, me. Was he singing? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you What do you call it? I apologize. What is that? It's ah, called, ah, that 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 thing. It's called tan. Tan. Yeah. Tan. Tan. Okay. Faster portions, right? The, uh, yeah, the fastest. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Which is, I, it's the same mechanism of, of Western vibrato, yes? It's just a lot faster. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. It yeah. sounds awesome. And it, you do it a lot in like one breath too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, it's like uh, when, when I was a kid, I'm sure you must have done it also. When, when you're a kid, you're trying to jump from the stairs. Hmm. And you're jumping because you want to get there. You don't essentially count the numbers, number of stairs that you go. 
to me when i am doing those portions it's not about how long i can do but it's how far i want to go mm. Mm. and sometimes i go there and sometimes i don't but mm. it's okay that's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, rapid fire. Yeah. Um, you're on Coffee with Quran right now. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have a hamper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coffee or chai? Um, chai when I have a set schedule and coffee when I'm traveling. Mm. All right. Thing you miss most when you're away from India? When I'm away from India, well, food, mm. but mostly my folks. Mm. Thing you miss most when you're away from the United States? My wife. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on RR winning an Oscar for Natu Natu? <laughs> <laughs> right answer. Yeah. Uh, favorite Marathi food? Favorite Marathi food has to be hands down uh, Varan Bhat Ani Katsre Chi Bhaji. I agree. Which is dal and rice mm. and potatoes fried in a stir fried in a certain way. Sounds like my Bengali wife. She's like, yeah, that sounds and wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, no. Is it spicy? Yeah. It's spicy, but not spiciest. Mm. It's spicy. For It'll me, be spicy though. for Corbin. <laughs> it's spicy yeah, for yeah. me. I have white boy disease. Uh, favorite style of music other than classical? It's very hard to choose. Uh, I'll tell you why. I, when I was going to UCSB, I did Middle, Middle Eastern Ensemble, then I did jazz, and then American popular music and all of it. I love to nibble uh, a little bit of food. That's how I feel about all non-classical mm. genres. Rap? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Heck yes. Heck yeah. You know, rap has something we call it laikari, the yeah. syncopation of the beats. Mm -hmm. the, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's kind of like a kaleidoscope mm. where all shapes have to make sense and then they change and they change and have to make sense again and they have to sound beautiful. Great analogy. Yeah. Favorite Western singer or a few? Andrea Bocelli. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite Indian actor? Favorite Indian actor? Mm. Shah <laughs> <laughs> um, Besides yourself, who is the greatest Indian singer? Oh, I'm, I'm not even close. Give me a, give me a, th give me a three. It's, it's got to be my Guruji. I can't mm. see anything beyond my Guruji. He's got to be, I mean, he's, I don't, I don't think I can compare any, anyone to him mm -hmm. because the way I feel about him even when he's not singing is so musical. Mm -hmm. He's like uh, very musical but there are too many. I, mean, I can't name three but if, if they have to be three, Bhim Sen Joshi Ji, mm -hmm. Lata Mangeshkar, mm -hmm. Zakir Hussain. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how long can you hold your breath? Um, <laughs> Do you know? No. I, well, I don't. You don't hold your breath. Well, you no, have great breath support. Breath. Yeah. I use my breath to go as far as I want. Mm -hmm. So like when you're swimming, you don't ask your it, wife to time you no, when I you're underwater. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite Indian movie? Favorite in Katyar Karzal Gosli. Besides your movie. <laughs> Favorite Indian movie? Could be any industry. You know, you'd be surprised, but I like Munna Bhai MBBS a lot. We haven't seen I it yet. I loved Hera mm -hmm. I loved Andaz Apna Apna. I love uh, comedy the comedies in yeah. general. But I also like, l loved Wednesday. It was mm -hmm. a movie. Yep. Nasir. Nasir. Oh, yeah, Nasir. And I, I also love the typical Shah Rukh Khan uh, movies. I love Amir Khan movies. Mm -hmm. I love to... Uh, it's sad that I haven't gone to watch too ma many movies lately. I only am able to watch movies when I'm flying across. Right. And I'm not able to complete because I'm always sleeping. Sleeping. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And uh, last, where can people in the United States go to buy tickets to your concert? Can that be done through your <laughs> can website? Can that be done through your website? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But I, it, um, Don't know the exact. I'll put yeah, it in yeah, the description. Yeah. It'll worry. be in the description. Don't It'll worry. Be in the description. Uh, did you want to say something? Yeah, quick? I just wanted to say, just as a closing point, that you had mentioned a few moments ago about the atmosphere in the world that we live in right now and how the atmosphere in the concerts is so wonderful because you don't see in the world right now a lot of unity and kindness. And that is the one thing, even though we don't speak Marathi, and that was what everyone was speaking, 
there was a unity of everyone involved experiencing the same emotions, being in the moment with you, knowing what you were doing and what the instruments were doing with you was just in the moment. And aside from the beauty of the artistry, one of the most beautiful takeaways from this is to have experienced three hours of humanity being unified and at peace and focusing on higher things and appreciating beautiful things. That, that was one of the most unexpected and beautiful things about the concert tonight. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I can't say anything as pretty as that. So <laughs> thank you so much. You can just say Mahesh Kaare and Katyar Karzad Gusli. <laughs> Gusli. How do you say? Uh, Mitra. No. Uh, <laughs> goodbye in Marathi. Uh, is there a word? You don't say goodbye. Oh, you, you don't? Say namaskar. Ah. Yeah, namaskar. Punha say, let, let Punha me say, let me, see you again. Let me say something funny in Marathi. Okay. You go <laughs> and anything say, silly. Anything. Anything silly. You want me to make he, you think that? Yeah, something? say something silly. And what should he, he would like to let know something silly in Marathi that he can say. Or vulgar. Yeah, he likes vulgar <laughs> things too. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you something. It's like a very uh, village kind of. Kai Pauna. Kai Pauna. Kai Sale. Kai Sale. Kai Karalais. Kai, sorry. Kai Karalais. Kai Karalais. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. He's going to repeat, he will memorize that and <laughs> he'll do it in intros. So thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you.